In this episode, we have the incredible honor of talking with master storyteller, Kristen Hanna. Kristen Hanna is the award-winning and best-selling author of more than 20 novels, including reader favorites Firefly Lane, Winter Garden, The Great Alone, and The Four Winds, and the international blockbuster The Nightingale, which was named Goodreads Best Historical Fiction Novel for 2015 and won the coveted People's Choice Award for Best Fiction in the same year. Welcome to the first 50 pages, Kristen. Thank you. It's great to be here. So just a quick full circle moment for Jen and I on the first 50 pages. In our very first episode in 2018, we talked about the best books of the year and the most in-demand books of the year. And The Great Alone topped that list for our library. It was the most sought after book that year. It felt like everyone wanted to read it. In February of, yeah, (laughs) it was a very cool experience. Yeah. So in February of this year, you released your newest book, The Women, and this one has had the same kind of buzz for us that we saw with The Great Alone. It has more requests than any book that we've had for quite a while. And I'm just going to call it right now, The Women will be one of the most requested and talked about books for us this year. Well, thank you. I I thank your readers. That's great. (laughs) And we actually, I just brought up, um, you know, our library and most of the libraries across the state of Iowa subscribe to Libby. And I just brought up for our consortium, we have over 1,400 people on hold for the audiobook. So um, it's, it's pretty incredible. I haven't seen, oh, yeah, uh, you know, it, people wanting to read a book like that since I've started. And we have so many people that come in, they're like, I haven't read a book in a while, but my friend told me about this author, that told me about the women. <laughs> do you possibly have that one? And I was like, well, we do have it, but you're probably going to be waiting just just, just a little bit <laughs> to get your hands on it. But. We have lots of copies of mm-hmm. it, so that, that's great. I guess the, the good news is that it appears to be a pretty fast read, so hopefully <laughs> it's a, a quick turnover for your patrons. <laughs> yes. I think they've got their fingers crossed. For our readers that don't know about the women, could you tell us a little bit about your latest book? Sure. Um, so this novel, for the last couple of years, sort of, for people who don't know me, I have been writing about women's lost stories. Um, stories, um, usually historical, that haven't really talked about what the women were doing and are highlighting our courage, our res. Uh, our grit, our resilience, and The Women is another one of those novels. This is about the women who uh, served in the Vietnam War, the American nurses primarily who served in the Vietnam War, and it's their story of both going to war and then coming home to a very changed and divided America and their struggle to sort of... um, grow up after serving in the war that's a very good condensed (laughs) because there's so much in this book um so not only are your characters memorable but as a reader we are taken to the time and place of your stories in the women you bring us into this very specific era of time surrounding the vietnam war in part through fashion music hairstyles and pop culture references Um, And for some readers, this is going to evoke very strong memories. And for younger readers, it really must be like time travel. And so my question, I'll get to the question. What was the research process like for you in writing this book? Um, Well, yeah, you're right. I mean, and I think that, that one of the reasons that people love my books in general and are loving this book in particular is the care I take with time and place and the really, um, my goal of transporting you to this area era, whether you live through it or you you didn't, you know, my job is to really recreate it. And um, and in this one, obviously, this is the first time that I had written uh, a historical novel that would be read by a lot of people who had actually lived through the time period and had a lot more firsthand knowledge of it than I did. So it was a pretty daunting undertaking to, um, to recreate this. And, you know, there was a lot of sort of generalized research. And then there was a lot of specific research where I spoke to Vietnam era 
nurses and pilots and doctors and, and veterans to make sure that my, my Vietnam War uh, portion of this book was as accurate and as authentic as it could be. And you're right that a big part of all of this is the music and the clothing and the, the contemporary news stories of the day, because all of those things are a real shortcut, I think, to bringing an era to mind. And especially the music of the 60s and 70s is so um, beloved and remembered by everyone. You know, even my son, you know, listens to Pink Floyd and the Beatles and, you know, the, the songs of the era. So that was a really fun component to bring back into the story to create the environment. In preparation for this interview this morning, I was listening to the Spotify playlist for the women. Yeah. And, it, and it really does. You know, I'm like, yeah, of course the song should be there. Yes. You know, it, it was it's just a, another cool dynamic um, that brings a story to life. Well, no, I was just going to say, I think a lot of this goes back to my early reading. Um, you know, my, my time's in the library as a kid reading fantasy and loving you know the world building of the lord of the rings or or dune or these kinds of stories and i think i've really carried that sensibility into my own historical novels kelsey and i really do experience that the the best storytellers were read have been readers you know they they just get it (laughs) <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and readers are going to feel a lot of emotions throughout this book, um, speaking from experience, you know, as re- um, you know, from the horrors of the Vietnam War, you really don't pull any punches. And some of those um, scenes are, are really hard, um, you know, all the way to the way that the women veterans of the war were treated when they came home. You know, you kind of talked a little bit about the challenge of research, but was the challenge of writing this book more difficult because of those scenes? Well, you know, the as, as you point out, the the Vietnam section of the book where my, where my female characters and my heroine, Frankie, are nurses in a MASH unit um, not far from the fighting. It was really important to me to honor the the nurses and the doctors and the patients and everybody who had been there by showing it um, for what it was, which meant that it was very visceral and and there are a lot of sort of difficult scenes. But one of the reasons I kept coming back to, to doing it in such an honest and authentic way is because when um, these nurses came home, a lot of them had sort of, you know, they were sort of forgotten and and nobody was paying attention to them. And many of them came home with undiagnosed, untreated uh, PTSD, and there was nowhere for them to go for help. But when they did try to get help, they were often told either there were no women in Vietnam or you weren't in combat. How can you possibly have suffered any emotional trauma you know, just go on and, and you'll forget about it. And it, and so it was very important for me to show what these nurses had lived with on a daily basis and, and why, in my opinion, it is definitely uh, should be considered combat. And it was, you know, those scenes, like you said, honest and authentic. Those are great words um, because you definitely feel that. And then when you know, later in the book, they're told it's not, they weren't in combat. You really feel that frustration and, and that, that invalidation of what they felt and what they went through. And, and you feel that injustice. So yeah, it's, there's, a, there's a lot of emotions to, you know, in this book, true to form, I think. But so. <laughs> well, um, and you know what, these, these women Um, I've met so many of them now, you know, since writing the book and while during the writing of the book, and they're so remarkable and their service was remarkable. And, and as I said, they have been, you know, um, 
overlooked and not talked about, you know, for such a long time. And I really feel honored to be able to to bring this story forward and to shine a light on their service. And not just the women, by the way, even though the book is about the women um, who serve the, the, the nurses, it's really also in a way the story of the male vets as well, who of course came home to the same kind of you know, divided America and the same uh, difficulties in terms of no gratitude or um, recognition of their service either. So looking back, uh, your writing has definitely evolved over the 20 novels that you've written. Your early books kind of lean a little bit more historical romance, but it seems um, that you've really found your voice as a writer and a loyal following of readers when you started writing historical fiction and especially writing about the lost history of women. Could you talk a little bit about this evolution and was there a catalyst or a specific moment that made you want to write in a different genre? You know, really, it's just, it's really sort of the evolution of my life as a woman. And, you know, I, I wrote my first, my first published book, I think when I was 29. Um, and so, you know, I was... When I started this, I was a, a young woman, a new mother, um, fairly newly married. And, you know, so I wrote about, and I have written about all along, about women and our struggles and the constraints upon us and what it takes for us to find our voice, whether that is as a stay-at-home mom, as a career woman, later as, you know, an empty nester, and, and then I think when I reached a certain age, probably roughly 50, my son, of course, was gone. And, you know, my husband and I were empty nesters and we were able to begin traveling a bit finally, you know, as you can do after your, your kids are gone. <laughs> and, and I think that's when I started looking outward more. I started thinking more about not just women like me, but women in general and and what our histories had to say about people and and once i started looking at that i realized that that of all the history i knew and all the history i had read about very little of it centered on primarily what the women were doing and so my first foray into it was a book called winter garden about the the women in Leningrad during um, World War II when they were cut off. And and that was sort of the beginning of this understanding that there were women's stories out there that needed to be told. And I, I've i spent the last, you know, 10 or 15 years uh, writing about those. And I think your readers can definitely like feel that come through in your writing. And I think that maybe is one of the reasons besides your master storytelling that endears you to them, that you can feel that passion and, you know, then they're avid readers of historical fiction. So they have a passion for it too. So I think they kind of relate to you in that way. I think so too. And I think also we are living in um, a really wonderful times in, in terms of, uh, the literature that's out there. We are in a time for the first time that I can remember where publishers and readers and booksellers, where everyone is actively looking for lost or marginalized stories. And I think it's so important to bring all of these stories to life to sort of um, just, you know, correct the American record and talk about what other people have been doing and, uh, you know, other groups' struggles and triumphs. Because I think the more we we read about each other, the more we have empathy, the more we understand, the more likely I think we are to come together instead of to remain apart. And I think even in as we purchase books for our library, we do see so much more that is available, I'd say, than even, you know, five, ten years ago. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Which brings new people into the library yeah. as well. Yeah. 
um, which is, you know, so it's, it's really an expansion of community. You know, the expansion of history is the expansion of community. And I just think that's, um, you know, so important. And you can do this, you know, library by library across the country. So as we've mentioned, you've written 20 novels. Um, I don't know where I've been for the last 15 <laughs> years, but I've only recently started reading your books. Um, and I, I don't know, for me, I feel like sometimes when everyone's reading a book, I often think it can't possibly be as good as the hype. But I'm going to go on record to say that I am loving your books and I love the women. Um, and now I'm just delighted that I have so many more of your books that I will get to enjoy. <laughs> but what I, I can keep you busy. Yes. <laughs> but what I've discovered um, is that when I tell someone that I'm reading your books, if they've read you, then they want to talk about your books. Readers do feel an emotional connection to your characters, these strong women who survive against extraordinary circumstances. And Frankie, you know, I, wow, what a character. And Frankie McGrath, um, you know, she she's young, you know, so young. You know, you, you have to remind yourself how young she is as you're reading the story when she goes to war um, by choice, right? She doesn't always make good deci decisions, um, but we're always rooting for her. And, you know, I, I just, I guess, so here's the question, right, as I'm talking about your book. Where do you find inspiration for your characters? Well, it, that's a that's a very you know character by character, book by book um, answer. But let's take the you know the last fifteen years or so from Winter Garden. So uh, so primarily um, women of a, hyster a historical era surviving in that time. Um, what I am looking for is the creation of a woman who really strongly represents the stories of her time. Um, so Frankie is not obviously uh, based on anybody, but she is based on a collection of memoirs and stories about the, the real women who served uh, as army nurses in Vietnam, as are you know, my other historical characters. And so I'm looking for the woman that is most like the women who she represents. And that led me to, you know, young, they were, as you point out, they were very young. And I did have to keep reminding myself, as I was writing this, okay, she's 21 years old, she's, you know, she has no very little life experience, she comes from a very um, conservative and privileged background. And she's been raised on family stories of uh, patriotic pride in World War II. And so, you know, she very impulsively decides to follow her brother to service in Vietnam and expects to be, um, for, to make her parents proud as her brother made them proud. And so it is really her journey as it was many of the women who, who actually did this, it was, you know, their journey to go to war, to become um, seasoned combat nurses, and then come home and try to maneuver through this changed America and, um, and this country that really just didn't want to talk about the war or their service and the price these women and these veterans paid for that. So, so she she is my attempt to be as again as honest and and as authentic as I can be in telling the story so that it so that it really represents um, these women's service. Definitely, uh, the transformative power of female friendships and the relationships between women is a theme in many of your novels, and a reason yet another reason <laughs> why I think your books resonate so deeply with so many women. And in reading the women, the love of the, the sister nurses have for one another is a constant. You explore other kinds of love in this story, love of country, familial love, romantic love, self-love, but the love between these friends is really inspiring. In your research, did you find this to be true for the female veterans? Yeah, I mean, I really do think that the, the female friendship here is the beating heart of this book. It, it's 
it's what keeps Frankie going. It's what um, it's what matters most, I think, um, in terms of relationships. Although, as you point out, there there's a lot of different levels of love stories in this book. Um, but yeah, you know, we're all used to seeing and to reading stories about male camaraderie during wartime, and and I think it is sort of universally true that when you put these these young people in this situation that is so intense and so dangerous and so emotional that the bonds that they make are are powerful and and I think especially on uh, in women this kind of friendship can be unbreakable almost a a soulmate kind of of friendship and love and that's what you know these that's what these women share and I was fortunate enough uh, last November to go to Washington DC for Veterans Day where I met uh, Diane Carlson Evans who wrote a book called Healing Wounds about her Vietnam service and is the founder of the Women's Vietnam Memorial and I saw you know these 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 veterans, these female veterans come together at their own memorial on Veterans Day. And, you know, they were laughing and crying and hugging and sharing stories and introducing their families. And you could just see that not only did they have this unbreakable bond with the women they'd served with, but simply their shared experience created a bond among women who hadn't even met before. And it was an, a, a really powerful um, and moving moment to see that. Straying off of the book a little bit, but kind of staying in the same vein, um, would you mind sharing in what ways the women in your life have shaped your writing? Well, I mean, that's, that's why I write so much about, I think, female relationships. I mean, friendship, to, to start on friendship, it has been sort of the thing that has has kept me afloat a great deal during my the ups and downs of my life certainly in young motherhood you know that's when most of my core girlfriends came together um we were either you know young mothers or young writers or you know some kind of connection and i have very much you know my my tribe that um that is really important to me and so i'm constantly i guess supporting this idea that female friendship is important and i was just talking to my best friend the other day about the the fact that you know to have the kind of female friendships that you need in your life takes work in the same way that motherhood takes work and and being married takes work you know you have to prioritize these relationships and so i think i'm always trying to remind women uh to prioritize these relationships and to make time for your girlfriends, even when, you know, you're at the stages of your life where you feel that you have no extra time at all. Yeah. In, in reading through this book, one of the things that sort of sat in the back of my mind is I need to reach out to my friends. Yeah. I need to, I want to be a better, I can be a better friend. I can, you know, I need to be there, um, you know, not because I want to, you know, because we want to be there for each other. And um, yeah, that was a really good takeaway um, for me from this. Book. I love that. I mean, that's that that just means so much to me. I remember when my son was about, I don't know, gosh, probably 25 or 26. He he read my novel Firefly Lane and um, which is the my book about uh, a, a young mother suffering from breast cancer and you know how that impacts her family which is a story that's very close to my heart actually and you know he called me afterwards and I could tell how moved he was and he said you know I just wanted to call and tell you how much I love you oh, and man. I thought that's you know that's what my books are really about the reminder to call the people that you love um, because A, you never know how long they'll be there and B, it keeps you connected and keeps those relationships on the front burner. One of the things that we love to talk about on the first 50 pages is the power of stories for readers. Um, and I believe that the memorable books that we read, the stories that stay with us are the ones that change us. 
the stories that open our eyes, help us to learn, make us feel things. And as I mentioned, I just finished um, reading The Women last night. And Thoughts Matter are still kind of bouncing around in my head. Um, the writing is incredible. Um, but I, d- I do want to just quick shout out to Julia Whalen's narration of the audiobook. Oh. As always, she just adds a depth to the characters that I, I don't know that I can find on my own. Um, yeah, she's just she's just the best, you know. It, um, love listening yes, to I, her. Yes, I am yeah. incredibly grateful for her. She does an amazing job. Yeah, and we actually had one of our earlier episodes. We had the chance to chat with her, and she's just she's just fantastic. But uh, it's always a delight to to make those connections. I didn't know she was necessarily going to be the narrator of the book, and then to have her be the narrator, it just kind of brings us you know a full circle moment and and we just love that but as I'm thinking about the women it really is a book that starts conversations in book clubs in families and hopefully in our communities as you travel and talk about this book with different groups are you seeing this impact oh my gosh I mean I feel like I've been you know kind of a a book club favorite for a long time. So I'm used to my book, you know, the Nightingale sparked a lot of conversations. And just like I'm trying to get people to reach out and and call their their mother, their sister, their best friend, I'm also trying to encourage families to tell their own stories to each other because all too often our family stories are lost because they either aren't asked about or aren't talked about. And in this book in particular, um, while I was on book tour, you know, meeting people and talking to readers, I was hearing so much from particularly veterans and their families about, you know, stories that needed to be told about their parents or their grandparents' uh, service in Vietnam and people feeling, um, I guess saddened that they didn't know these stories, both their own stories and sort of America's stories. And I think these Vietnam veterans have waited a very long time to have their stories brought to light and to have their service talked about and remembered. And you know, one of the one of the biggest thematic points of this book is the importance of remembrance, the importance of gratitude. And so I'm, I'm thrilled to sort of see the conversations that this book is starting among people of all ages. But I was sitting down with my parents the other day, and my uncle had been in Vietnam. And I asked my mom, you know, questions about it, you know, and, you know, she, you could tell that she, you know, took a step back and thought about it. You know, and then she talked really honestly about when he came home, and it was powerful. That, oh, I hope that stays in the podcast. That's, just, <laughs> that's so it's so important. It yeah. really is. But but it is. It's just you know, I I wouldn't have asked that question had I not read the book and you know and got to follow Frankie's character, you know, arc, you know, and and to have that sort of emotional connection. So yeah. Anyway, it's. It, it, it was, I even got a little tear in my eye now. She did. In my, <laughs> but, um, so, you know, one more question. What are the books that have stayed with you as a reader? Oh, of course, you know. I'm a, <laughs> We're librarians. I'm a we have to ask the reader, question. So this is like, you know, this is, this is a long list that goes yeah. back decades. Um, but the ones that, I mean, there's so many, but let's start with, uh, the Lord of the Rings, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Dune, um, It, I went through my Stephen King years, um, I love his stuff, The Witching Hour, Interview with a Vampire, Anne Rice, there was that era, um, Pat Conroy, who I love, um, uh, Carlos Ruiz Zafone, Shadow of the Wind, one of my favorites, um, I would say William Kent Kruger, um, Alice Hoffman. Um, what is one I've really loved lately? There's a new book called, uh, not new, a book called We Begin at the End by Chris Whitaker. I love that. Um, 
I, so those are a few of them. Those are all great ones. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> your um, website has some really great and fun information about you, some great interviews. So if people want, you know, more about you, you know, it's there. And yeah. I, I encourage them to, I encourage them to, you know, seek it out because it, you know, it's just another way that people feel connected to you because you're a real human. I'm also pretty <laughs> active on, on Instagram and Facebook as well. Um, and that's been a fun place. Those have been fun places in the last couple of years to hear from readers, especially, you know, during the COVID era when we, when we couldn't leave. And, and so it was really nice to get to talk to readers and hear their thoughts on those forums as well. Yeah, that's got to be kind of a fun dichotomy to be able to interact with them in that way. And of course, when yeah. readers love an author, they can become a little bit obsessed about, you know, what's next. <laughs> Uh, but I think we'll leave you with our best wishes to enjoy the whirlwind of the release of such an incredible, incredible book. We loved the women well, and we are thrilled to have gotten to talk with you today. Thank you so much, as am I. Um, and thanks to all your readers. And I hope they don't hope they don't spend too long on the waiting list. Well, no, it actually, you know, we the more readers and the more copies of the book that we get. So um, I think when I put myself on the wait list, you know, here's the hope, here's the hope. I was 200th in line, but I got the audiobook before our interview. So it, it goes oh. fast. It, it does go fast. Not fast enough, because now everyone's going to want to read your book even more <laughs> after listening to this. But. Well, thank you. And I will, I will give Julia your best. <laughs>